after many years and videos searching, I think I found my favorite Chelsea boot. G'day guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com. It's a website where I talk about boots all day because I really, really like boots. I mean, some of them I don't like, but I like the Trento boots more than any boot in a long time. It is a Chelsea boot, a slip-on boot that actually does a good job of securing the heel and which has a nice sleek shape that makes it, if you get this black leather one, one of the very rare instances of a Chelsea boot that can be worn with a suit, in my opinion. And in the suede, just one of my favorite casual boots. So, hey, let's talk about the Trento. And you know what? Maybe there isn't that much to talk about with these boots. It's, it's just a really, really simple, straightforward boot, and that's why I love it so much. The simplicity and the minimalism really scratch my itch because my, uh, my, I guess if you want to call it style or fashion philosophy or something, is that uh, I like simplicity. I don't want to look too weird. I don't want to be embarrassed by what I'm wearing today when I see pictures 20 years from now, right? I just want stuff that like ages well in terms of both the look, the style, and also the durability. Because I'm also kind of a cheapskate. Like I want my clothes and shoes to like last, to outlast the cheapest stuff that I could have bought. So when Coyo sent over these Italian made Trentos, I, I just like them it's hard to find much to complain about because it just gets the basics right. Koyo is a company that's, that's pretty into minimalism, maybe because it was founded by a couple of German guys where like minimalism in design is kind of celebrated, or maybe it's because they're like me and they just get tired of overcomplicated shoes and apparel, right? If you've heard the name before, Koyo, it's probably because of their white sneakers that took the industry by storm a few years back. And many folks, including me and the modest man in this video up here that I did with him, think it's just the best minimalist white sneaker. Naturally, Koyo expanded into other sneakers, a lot of them with kind of cool 80s vibes, and they eventually made their way to boots. I did not love their first designs, but after some refining, they have two Chelsea boots that I'm, I'm pretty crazy about. Well, one is the more rugged Fermo boot, and then there's this Trento boot right here. Now, I grabbed this boot in two leathers, the almost white suede one, they call cardamom, and this smooth black one. So you can see different ways of wearing it. If you check their site, the models are all wearing kind of like elevated casual kind of like Soho looks with these boots. What I'm putting to you is that I think you can wear the white cream suede one here with a t-shirt really easily. And the black one is pretty good casually, but it's a sleek enough design that when wearing it with a suit, I think it works. What do you guys think? This is me rocking them with a suit, albeit not with a tie because I hate ties. And also because Chelsea's with a suit, like it's controversial enough that I, I kind of figured no tie was gonna be my ceiling for the look. Uh, so like, I'm not so sure about Chelsea's with a tie or with a tuxedo, but you know, it really depends on who you ask and, and where you're asking it. Sort of like like loafers with an outfit like this dressed up like that's not uncommon in the US loafers with like a no tie suit but it's considered a no-no in the UK obviously you won't get arrested for either but like there, there are some items of clothing that are funny like that and the Chelsea is a good example in Australia where I'm from Chelsea's are very much part of the cultural landscape thanks to the omnipresence of RM Williams people are more than happy to wear RMs to a board meeting as much as they are to wear them with shorts uh, for yard work in New York City I think it's like considered like a bit riskier to wear Chelsea's with a suit. But yeah, make up your mind. When the leather is nice and glossy like this and the last is streamlined, I think it can work. But obviously I've got Australian biases at play here. So uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments about dressing up Chelsea's. While we're talking about the leathers, uh, Koyo has a more sustainable approach to footwear like this than you normally see. I actually did a video with them uh, a while back about their tanning processes because there are a ton of myths out there about how bad leather tanning can be for the environment. It can be very, very bad. There's a lot of research, especially in the city of Kanpur in India, which has like over 400 tanneries. Actually, a lot of them closed during the pandemic, but like whatever, the longer standing research shows everything from polluted waterways to like leather workers getting cancer and skin lesions and all manner of issues. Because when a tannery isn't well regulated and they're making chrome tanned leather, which almost all leather worldwide is, you get runoff of chromium-6 as a byproduct, and that's what's really bad for your health and the environment. But technology has advanced, and you can make sure there's no chromium-6 pollution now. And that's why all of Koyo's leathers have certifications from the Leather Working Group. That's an organization that sends officers out to tanneries to audit their practices for everything, like everything from environmental impact to worker well-being. I've mentioned this process uh, in other videos, but just for folks who are just finding this from their search bar or guys who are specifically wondering why Koyo talks such a big game about their sustainability, 
that's like the main reason. That's an important reason for it, that uh, leather is usually bad for the environment, but not in this case. So let's talk about the construction now on the Trento boots. A reason they're able to achieve this sleeker look, like notice there's not like a big uh, kind of shelf coming around the perimeter of the vamp here with the sole stitching. That's because these are Blake stitched. Again, regular viewers know a lot of this, but if you're not regular, like, hello, hi, maybe really nice if you subscribed. But also, shoes tend to be like cemented, like you glue the top to the bottom, or they're Blake stitched, or they're Goodyear welted. There are some other methods as well, like stitch down is probably the next most popular, but to keep things a little bit simple, cemented shoes can't be resold, and Goodyear welts are what you find most on like work boots that need to be water resistant and resolable. Blake stitches are more associated with dressier fare, or at least footwear that doesn't need to endure a lot of bad weather and like rugged beatings. There is a perception that I confess I'm guilty of propagating myself in my earlier videos many years back and I didn't know as much. There's a misconception that Blake stitches are bad in weather and can't be resold. They definitely can be resold, in fact. There are just like slightly more cobblers with the machinery for Goodyear welts, but the majority of cobblers can resold a Blake stitch. That's the first thing. The second thing with water resistance, it is a bit less fantastic than Goodyear welts, but these ones from Koya are very tightly stitched, and I found it was pretty good at water resistance. I wouldn't step directly into puddles like I did with their Fermo boot, but this boot does just fine in the rain. You might be wondering why didn't Koyo just hedge their bets and go with the Goodyear welt, which is like kind of more celebrated among people who want rugged footwear. Well, I mean, for one, like I said, it's hard to make it a bit dressy and they want this to be more versatile and easier to dress up and smart casual. It's harder to do that with a Goodyear welt, which tends to have more stitching running around the perimeter. But the main reason a lot of people prefer Blake stitches is that they tend to find them more comfortable than Goodyear welts. And that's because it makes for a shoe that's lighter and more flexible and doesn't have as much of a tough break-in to endure. So that kind of comfort is more important to a lot of guys than the ability to step into puddles. You can make up your own mind, but again, uh, in light rain, I found that these work pretty well, definitely better than most dress shoes. The rest of the construction we've got here is a cushioned insole for some extra shock absorption with a layer of leather on top of it. There's a shank under the midfoot here, uh, so that's gonna provide some stability, which is a must in a boot with a heel like this. There's a leather midsole as well and a leather outsole. Pros and cons to that, uh, guys who like rugged wear tend to prefer something grippier than a leather outsole. That's the only real downside though. If you're walking on ice, like they're not great, but you should remember that as you wear it in, the sole does get kind of ugly and scratched, but these scratches do give it some grip. And eventually like the grip is not actually that bad with these shoes. I wouldn't wear them in snow, but you get a modicum of grip such that you're not skittering around on concrete. So like it looks more scary than it actually is. The pluses of leather soles are many. I, I used to hate leather soles, but now I actually quite like them. For one, they're light and flexible, like, like Blake Stitch construction, right? It helps with that. They're softer than a lot of rubbers out there. Leather is more breathable than rubber, so many guys prefer them in warmer weather. Like it's, it's a big part of why cowboy boots tend to have leather soles. And the two layers of leather here conform to the foot over time. You've probably heard that about boots with leather insoles or midsoles. When it's leather all the way down, the comfort gets really nice with wear. I will confess that the shock absorbing insole here means you won't get quite the level of boot molding to foot like you do in all leather construction, but the rest of the boot still conforms to you. Like the foam compresses with time, which also helps with that element of it. And you obviously get the benefits of shock absorption that a lot of guys prefer if they're walking on hard surfaces most of the day, like concrete or, you know, indoors. Anyway, if you're tired of boots that are heavier and stiffer than they need to be for your lifestyle, you'll enjoy these nice flexible Blake stitched leather soled boots. Like it's a, it's a really nice change of pace for a lot of guys. The sizing is the main downside here because they don't do half sizes or wide widths, but more importantly, they don't do half sizes, which is a bummer. Uh, do, doing so like doubles the R&D costs for developing all the lasts and everything to have all the half sizes. But yeah, I, I would like them to do half sizes. The good thing about boots like this is as you wear them in, the heat and friction of your heel starts softening up the leather and you get less heel slippage as the heel kind of starts conforming to your foot. You can sort of tell like this one I've worn more than this one and like the, the heel is like a little bit more pronounced as a result. But as a half size guy myself, yeah, I mean, I got no heel slip on the suede one here and uh, with the black ones, I had a little bit until I remembered to use boot socks and I remember that I need to wear them in a little bit more. But that's the great thing about boots as you wear them, they, they become more fitted to your foot. The price is $365, which is a fine price for what you're getting. Aha, uh -huh, quick little edit to say that Koya gave me a discount code. I didn't ask them for it, but just right before this video was gonna go up, they said, hey, Stradwise 20 for 20% off, which brings these boots to under, under 300 bucks, which is actually very, very, very good value for this, at least as long as the code lasts. I don't know how long it lasts for.
Like remember, they're they're completely made in Italy with Italian components and Italian leather. Even the shoebox is Italian, which is like a funny touch. Uh, the leather is sustainable. The construction is refined and it's also resolvable. If they were over 400 bucks, I'd be a bit upset. If they were under 350, I'd be a bit amazed. 365, it's it's good. That's about what I'd expect to pay for this kind of boot. Okay, so to wrap up with some pros and cons, I, I like really really like these boots. Like uh, the black ones, like, they dress up very very easily, but they actually aren't so pointed here that they can't be worn uh, a bit more casually. Like. I would personally make sure I always had a button down on, but Koyo isn't a brand that gets really fussy about those sorts of rules. And you know, I, I probably shouldn't be either. The suede ones I wear casually all the time. I think they're really, really awesome. Again, totally Italian made in a very beautiful factory. Uh, they released some footage that you can see here. The Blake stitch and leather sole combination makes for a boot that is again, lighter, more flexible and softer underfoot than you're probably used to. If you're one of these guys who are good year well or bust, like it's a really nice change to be in these boots. And it's a reminder that Blake stitch exists for a reason. Like, most city guys or guys who don't tend to wear their footwear in the forest, they, they tend to like this construction. It's like, it's a, I think a lot of people probably don't realize that boots don't have to be quite as stiff uh, as Goodyear Welter construction is. And the ground feel is really nice as well and it breathes well. And uh, again, it's not as hard as most rubber soles. Anyway, I like it. There's also a shank in here around the midfoot. That's like not so much commendable as it is a necessity for a boot with a heel. But you know, there are plenty of boots out there, especially cheap ones that don't include it. Uh, and without getting too deep into like the pros and cons of shanks, uh, there aren't really any cons and the pros are that it helps with stability. So they're, they're really important when there's a heel on there. And also guys tend to find when they're on their feet all day construction like this uh, with all the leather and also the shank in there, it helps to like uh, avoid foot pain at the end of a long day. So that's a big reason why people get boots. And my point here is there is there's more functionality and uh, practical comfort to this uh, more refined construction that you might be expecting. And also like the whole sustainable leather angle is nice as well. Like I got some inexpensive Indian boots uh, a little while back and uh, that was, I mean, it was from India and it was without the leather working group certification and uh, without that certification or at least a big name reputable tannery attached to it which those didn't you know i uh, i didn't feel that great about wearing it like i i get i get not caring about sustainability for something like recycled rubber sole versus partially recycled sole like you can overthink this kind of stuff but there's a lot of bad stuff that happens to people in leather tanneries because of uh badly run chrome tanning processes so you know you get a bit of peace of mind there the downsides, uh, yeah, man, no half sizes. That's that's the main one. Uh, the boot would probably be more expensive if they had half sizes and wide widths because it, it does cost a lot of money to develop that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, you know, there are no half sizes, which uh, which would be nice. Another like maybe downside, mostly just with this color here. Uh, this is not treated suede. This is like your regular classic traditional suede. It is also cream colored. So yes, uh, you do need to be very mindful of the stains. You'll be tempted to wear these out and about as soon as you get them like I did. I encourage you not to because as you can see in my outfit, outdoor shots, uh, I did get some some sort of, not, not stains, but yeah, there was a bit of dirt on them. Uh, after I filmed that outside, I actually just came back and got some sandpaper, and that's like actually a fun little hack for getting stains up your suede like really easily. I do still nonetheless have like a little bit of uh, dye here from my jeans. I doubt that's coming out. So that's, that's a thing to note. Uh, the suede is not pre-treated. Some people would like it to be pre-treated before they buy it, but then of course you're not buying suede. Uh, you're buying treated suede. Uh, the main thing I would say is just treat it with like a suede protector. Uh, Tarragon Nano Spray is a popular one, Sophia's Invulna, but also Koyo have their own. So you can just, if you want to just put that into your cart when you check out, that can make the whole thing a bit easier to, uh, a bit easier on the stress levels. Uh, no, the leather outsole is not as grippy as a commando sole, and no, it's not as water resistant as a good year welt. Uh, kind of clearly, this boot is not for taking into the woods or anything, and boots are allowed to exist that aren't for that. Contrary to all the insecure dudes in my comment section who always scream if a boot isn't like, made of the thickest leather imaginable with like 50 layers in the sole. Like rugged Chelsea's aren't usually what guys are after. Uh, if you are, Koyo makes the Fermo boot though, which is like a nice balance of like fashionable and more water resistant. Um, that one I've actually sloshed through puddles in Brooklyn in and actually was legit, like my socks were dry. So if you're really worried about the uh, water resistance, you can check out the Fermo boot from Koyo. This one is a, it's a bit more of a fashionable boot, but it is also one that can be resold and also can actually handle a bit of rain. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice balance there for a fashionable boot. All right, that's my review of uh, the Trento boot from Koyo. I just really, really like it. They've done minimalism really well. And I also just really like
fact that there's a brand that's like sort of finally assertively saying, you know, we're going with Blake stitches and leather outsoles. There are reasons why that construction and those materials have been so popular for so long. I don't care that everyone thinks I need like a really rugged, like good gear welt just for something they're gonna wear to the shops or into the office. Like they're, they're kind of out there saying, look, this is more flexible. It's more lightweight. It's more comfortable for a lot of people. Uh, you're gonna love it. Like they just put themselves out there and uh, this has just been a great reminder that there are other forms of making a boot that can still be resold, but also still be really, really comfortable uh, and lightweight and stuff. Yeah, anyway, that's the trend joke. Uh, subscribe if you just went up here on this channel and let me know in the comments below what you think of these boots. I'm a massive fan of them and I'm gonna keep on wearing them all winter long.